Hello, everyone. I hope you're doing well. It's really quite a pleasure to be here, part of the Global Digital Week. My name is Henry Gordon Smith. I'm the founder and CEO of Agritecture. I'm going to tell you a little bit about me and about Agritecture, and then I'm going to show you how we're using digital technology to empower new farmers to plan smarter farms everywhere in the world. So I'm really happy you're here and appreciate your time and interest through this presentation. And again, thank you so much to the organizers of the event. So as I said, my name is Henry, and 10 years ago, I got very, very interested in the idea of growing food in cities. If we think about it, 80% of our food is consumed in cities, is what the Rockefeller Foundation estimates by 2050. Think about that. 80% of our food are coming are, is consumed in cities. But let me ask you this question. How many cities and how many people in cities really know how to grow food? And it's really a big problem as we think about the future where people live in cities, that's where the investment is, that's where a lot of the energy of humanity is. More, most of the human population lives in cities, but cities do not have any strategies and any capability to protect the food that they need to survive and weather the challenges ahead, including climate change. So this is really what I made my mission at, at Agritecture. And as you can hear from the name, it's Agriculture and Architecture. And it's really about using architectural thinking to solve some of these challenges when planning farms in cities. And why is that important? Because when you plan a farm in a city or near a city versus outside, it's very different. It tends to be smaller. It tends to have to interact with the society and the community in different ways. It tends to have to use technology in different ways in order to attract investment. So it's quite different. And one more note before I tell a little bit more about how we got here, you know, I think it's really important that we think about agriculture from a global perspective and historical perspective. If you think about it, humanity never used to build cities or places where we lived without food. If we look at most of the major cities in the world, they're in locations that are designed to grow good quality food. And people used to grow food in their gardens, in their homes, and in farms nearby cities. But as we sort of advanced and sort of created more technology to grow food outside of the city, we centralized it elsewhere. And in the city itself, we lost the knowledge and we stopped valuing agriculture in the city. So this isn't about doing something new. It's about bringing something old back into cities and doing it in a modern high tech way. And that's where digital technologies can play a huge role. Now, what's passionate for me, what I'm excited about related to digital technologies is the role of data to make better planning decisions. 10 years ago, when I was a young college student looking at urban agriculture and especially new ways of urban agriculture, like hydroponic greenhouses and hydroponic indoor vertical farms, I could not get the data. I couldn't find out if I turn a building into a vertical farm, how much can I grow? If I turn a rooftop into a soil-based farm or a greenhouse, how much can I grow? This data actually in agriculture to make planning decisions, there's a huge gap. It's not available. And I spent so much time talking to different greenhouse companies and visiting farms and going to events and trying to speak to consultants to understand and reading all these academic papers. And it took a long time. In fact, I don't think it took at least two years before I had a clear understanding of the typical yields and typical economics of these new methods of urban agriculture. So my mission became to make that easier for anybody that wants to do that. And so we started providing consulting services around the world. So far to date, we've worked in over 35 countries and helped 160 clients. And more recently, we said, let's do more. We're very proud of 160 clients, but let's see what we can do to do more. Well, how can we do that? How can we scale our impact? How can we go further? Well, that's where software and digital technology comes in. So what we did is we took all this knowledge, all this data, and we built a software platform, the first platform of its kind that lets you plan any greenhouse or vertical farm from the comfort of your home or office on a computer. And I'm going to demonstrate to you how it works, and I'm going to show you how you could benefit from it and show you how digital technologies are making a difference. So let's take a look at that. So I'll let it load for a little bit, but we are going to design.agritecture.com. And this is Agritecture's software platform. And what this is really about is digital tools to plan smarter farms. And I'm just going to show you the opening page a little bit more and tell you a little bit about it. So right now it's a pretty new software. We've got about 2000 plus people who have been using our software. 
This is the average capital cost that they're doing on our software. So we break that down between small, medium, and large. So quite a few of them are looking to build decent sized farms. And our software sort of only does greenhouses and vertical farms right now, but in the future, it's gonna have more. As I said, it's relatively new. We can see most of them are planning vertical farms because this is a very exciting and even less known type of technology, but also many of them are still doing greenhouses. <clears throat> so just to show you some of the main features high level, and then I'll take you into the software. So what we do here is it's about building models. So a model is really a draft of how a hypothetical farm might perform. So if I'm in Lima, Peru, and I'm thinking about doing a greenhouse, I can actually build a model of what that greenhouse will look like before I invest, and I can save a lot of money. In English, we say proper planning prevents poor performance, the five Ps. So this is a lot about planning more effectively and having tools to do so. So you can also do greenhouse versus vertical farm. You can compare them to each other in our software. Our software will provide you with an economic snapshot of how the farm will perform. We break out capital costs and operational costs. I'm gonna show you this in much more detail. So this is just the preview. We also have a tool that lets us bring in the energy and conditions from local markets. So if the greenhouse is in Lima, Peru, and you put Lima, Peru in, it automatically uploads the climate data and light data from Lima, Peru, making it a lot faster and easier. I mentioned the issue of getting crop data. Well, we have 75 of the most popular crops for greenhouses and vertical farms already uploaded online. And we have a tool that lets you do market research and choose the right price for your products. And then at the end, we have a network of suppliers that provide financing and provide equipment to help you build your farm. So here's a little bit more, just because I mentioned this is at 160 now, but this is some of our work to date in about 35 countries. Um, and so this is where we've worked all around the world. So we have a lot of familiarity with very different markets and climates. But as you can see, we have a big gap here in Latin America, where we're hoping to do more. So maybe you will be one of our next customers in Latin America and helping to accelerate more urban agriculture. So I like to call agriculture designers sort of like a Swiss army knife, you know, a knife with all the various tools of planning your farm. So the first step, and anyone can do this for free, is we're going to answer some questions about the farm. So let me actually just sort of show you the answers to my questions, okay? So there's 10 questions. If you go here to the main site, you'll click this button and it'll ask you to answer 10 questions. The reason it's going straight to mine is because I've already answered them, but I'll show you sort of what that looks like. So after I've answered my questions, I'm gonna get free information about my urban farm vision. So based on the way I answered the questions, I'm gonna get some information to help me think about my idea more effectively. So this is the stage I said I was at, I'm researching. This is the sort of sales model I, think them about, I was thinking about. And this sort of gives us information about the sales model and how to think about it strategically. I chose leafy greens and herbs. I'm gonna go through this relatively quickly because you can try it for yourself for free. I identified as an entrepreneur. And, and when you go in the software, you have many different options to look at that. I also am gonna get a free timeline. So these are the steps to sort of start planning the farm, to think about what I would need to do to get my farm going. And then I'm gonna get some inspiration so inspiration is basically one, two, three real farms that exist today. And I can learn more about those farms by going to their farm website or reading more about them. I can also see the location of the farm and I can see when it was founded. Each farm is rated based on its relevancy to the way I answered the questions. Okay. And it'll make sense once you give it a try yourself. So what we're doing here is we're trying to give people free tools to take their ideas about urban agriculture, greenhouses and vertical farms and get closer to reality. Because we know business can be kind of emotional and you can get excited about it and you can want to do something very new, but you really need to get the data to do it effectively. And this is us taking you on that journey to use data in a digital way to be more intelligent about planning your farm. So hopefully you're ready. Now we can go take a look at our dashboard and this is what happens after you log in. And so let me just introduce you to the dashboard first. So on the dashboard, you can see here, I have that timeline again, but it's broken out and I can track my progress. So this is my journey to getting my farm built from vision to modeling, 
equipment, and validation. As I go through the software, I can actually mark the things done that I've completed. Okay, so my vision, that's done. Okay, it says completed already. <laughs> And so I can go through in that way. I can also see some of the latest blog posts from the Agritecture blog, so I can continue to learn here. And if I need help from anyone, I can contact the Agritecture team directly and request a meeting. What we see on the left here are all of our tools. Remember the Swiss Army knife, right? So these are different tools that are gonna help us plan our farm. So the vision one was the one I sort of shared with you earlier, which sort of shows me what my idea is, okay? So that's why it's marked as done. And it's going to load here in a second. So again, this is what that looks like. And I can always edit this. I can change my vision and I can change my answers to see if maybe my plan has updated a little bit more. Again, this is the inspiration one, which gives me some of the farm ideas. If I change my vision, my inspiration list will also change. Now, the first main feature that's premium, so you can preview these next features. If you sign up for free, you can preview them, but you can't use them fully. But I have a premium account, so you can see the premium features here. We have an e-learning platform. So we're trying to help everyone understand how urban agriculture works, how new models like greenhouse and vertical farms work. So my entire team, we are here giving lessons. So I'm giving the introductory lesson on strategy. My colleague Yara talks about economics. My colleague Javi talks about choosing equipment. My colleague David talks about choosing your market and identifying your market and choosing your crops. Alberto talks about energy and climate control management. And Eric talks about organics and aquaponics. Now, if I open up a lesson, you can see it's broken up into really small bite sizes. So I can watch them at three to eight minutes per, per time. And sometimes, depending on the lesson, I can have resources that I can download to go further where I can learn more about it. Okay. Let me just go back here. So the education platform is really designed to help you learn all the best practices that we've learned in 10 years and prepare yourself for success. And this part of the software is available. You can buy it on your own. I'll show you the pricing as we wrap up. Now, the main part of the software on the premium tool is our farm modeling software. So remember I referred to models. So this is that projects area where you can actually design the business plan and, and sort of light feasibility studies for your farms. So I can look at all projects, my projects in progress or completed. And you can see some of them are greenhouses and some of them are vertical farms, okay? So this is all the ones I've been working on. But how about we take a look and let's start a new project. Okay, so my project is going to be Enrique's farm. And my location is going to be in Lima, Peru. Okay, great. And if I click that, there we go. We have a map of Lima, Peru, and that means that the climate data has been uploaded. I'm going to do a greenhouse. If I want to do a vertical farm, I can do a vertical farm. I'm going to, I can choose rooftop or on the ground. I'm going to choose it to be on the ground. My local currency, I guess I don't have the local currency for Lima yet, so let's just stick with US dollars. But I think you use square meters for in this example, so we'll switch to metric. It's gonna ask me questions along the way that are gonna help make the estimate. So these information icons give you a lot of insight about how to use this properly. So let's say I am looking to rent this land. I don't know the price for sure. This is just an activity and exercise, but let's say my land is $10,000 per year. And let's say my site area is about an acre, 4,000 square meters. Now, again, here's another information piece. If I'm doing my greenhouse, 4,000 is my total, but sometimes I need processing, cold storage, bathrooms, or walkways. So I want both of those things. I'm going to turn that on, and you can see my total went down. Now, this is the only place online, our software, where you can estimate the yields of any greenhouse or vertical farm. And we've pre-uploaded 75 of the most popular crops and their yields and the systems they work on. So I'm just gonna choose some plants that I'm gonna grow. I'm gonna choose basil. I'm gonna do an NFT. If you take the classes, you'll understand these different systems. NFT means nutrient film technique. It's before the uh, crypto NFT. This was an older term. <laughs> and it really is a, a method of growing hydroponically. And I can choose the percentage of my farm that I want to be growing that product. 
So let's say 25%. And then I'm going to do another plant. I'm going to do arugula. Let's pick a different system. Maybe I'm going to do this in an ebb and flow system, another hydroponic method. So another 25%. Then I'm going to do one more and let's do maybe strawberries. And I'm going to do strawberries in like a vertical tower system. And I'm going to do that for 50% of my farm. Okay. So I can see I've used 100% of my farm. I can do as many as I want and I can delete them as I want. If you want to do organic, you can. That's going to change your costing a lot. Um, but you can do organic. Just make sure that you sell your product at organic prices. Insulation level, again, some insight here. I'm going to pick medium duty. I'm not going to pick any artificial lighting because I think Lima Peru has pretty good lighting, but for this exercise, I won't do it. And I have some other things like heating and CO2 injection. And you know what? In my scenario, I'm going to move to Lima Peru and I'm going to be the grower. So I'm going to keep yes and I'm going to say my experience is middle. And for the workers themselves, I don't know what the price is for the workers there, but you can override this with your own prices, let's say $8. And I'm going to self-fund this project. So you can do debt and then it will sort of give you the interest rate. You can do equity or you can do self-funded. So this is where the economic inputs are overrided for water costs, electricity costs, water per gallon amounts or liter and tax rates, okay? So I don't know what the tax rate is. Let's just put 10% for now. And then we can click here and we can see our results. Okay, so just in a few minutes after answering your questions, you're gonna get an economic snapshot of this farm. Let's see how we do. Okay, not bad, not bad actually, okay. So this farm is gonna, gonna generate a maximum revenue of a million dollars, two years to pay back. That looks a little bit too fast. So we need to revisit those numbers. It's probably because I am being the farmer, so I'm not paying somebody for farming. So let's actually go back here for one second and let's actually change that just so we get it more accurate. So let's say no, and let's put a grower salary in of $30,000 and then let's update that. Let's see how the top, it changes a bit. Okay, so a little bit longer. It's quite an expensive farm to build at about 1.2 million and my operating expenses are pretty high. So I really wanna think about this. This is where the crop pricing is. And one of the reasons why these numbers are so good is because I haven't done my market research yet. Market research is done in this tool here, the crop pricing tool that you can do after or before doing your project. But let me just show you the features first, okay? So I get a 10-year operating summary. I can see the number of jobs I'm creating. This is how many people I will feed daily with my strawberries and basil and arugula in Lima. This is my bed space. This is my maximum yield in kilograms. And this is my energy usage, pretty high, and my annual water usage. Now, capital costs are broken out, and I can see what they are, and I can see that a lot of my capital costs are going towards the grow system and the structure for the greenhouse. Also, some is going to construction. Now, if I want to change something, because maybe I got a good deal or I think I can get a cheaper price, let's say maybe the cooling, Maybe I actually got a more expensive price, okay? Let's say I got $10 per area for the cooling. I can edit it on this side to also change this. So again, my payback period is changing and it becomes a lot of very, very powerful control to estimate your business. I can go to my operating costs and I can change similar things. Be like, oh, you know, my electricity rate is actually much higher than this. It's 0 0.8, I was wrong. So we can update this here. Okay, now it's taking a little bit longer for me to get that money back. Also, maybe my water is actually a lot more expensive. Okay, so that's going to change some things too. So this is what's called advanced mode where you can update various parts and I can also see where things are going on my, cap, on my operational costs. Here I get an annual summary of the business and I can see throughout the time how waste goes down and my revenue gets balanced out. So we calculate waste in the system based on the experience of the grower. Now, on this tab, I can actually compare my projects. So when a, when a project is finished, I can compare them to each other. So I can compare this vertical farm to this greenhouse, and I will get a comparison table. So if I'm thinking about both or two different greenhouses, two different crops, I can compare them and see the differences. Wow, look at that difference. That's a big one. Look at the differences in yields. So I can think about that. 
Now, it's better to compare projects that are similar in size or crop or something has to be similar so you can have a good comparison. Okay, so that's the farm model tool. That's the main part of the IP. And then I'm just going to show you a couple of things more. We're almost done. This is the market research tool. So it's very important that you learn how to go to the market and you learn how to do market research. So we've created a tool where you can build your own market research archive. So I can input what I see in the market, in the store. I can even use this on my phone. And I can do this by looking online or talking to customers. So I can say, okay, this basil sells for $2. It is 100 grams. It is medium quality. It is packaged in a plastic bag. I saw it at the supermarket. And this is what they're selling it for. And it's not marketed as anything, okay? So I do that. I do it again. Let's do another one. This one was, let's say, $3. And this one was 200 grams. And this one was low quality. And this one was in a clamshell. And this was also at a supermarket. And this is what they were selling it for. Let's do one more. This one was $4. And this one was 150 grams. And this one was very high quality. And this one was a custom clamshell, very nice packaging. I saw it actually at the farmer's market. And it was organic and local, OK? So now I have these three prices and I'm going to think about my farm. I want to sell my basil in 150 grams and I want to sell it to supermarkets because that's where I saw a lot of that. So then I click calculate and this is the price it recommends I sell it at. And then I can click continue and I can connect it to, let me see, I've got so many farm projects here. Where is my Enrique's farm? There we go. I can connect it to my project and it will actually live on my project now, if I go back, I've got my basil here and I go here and I'm gonna to click to calculate it. And now I'm getting this price and look, wow, look how my payback changed because the market is telling me what it's willing to pay, what's gonna work. So my accuracy of my economics improves a lot. Now, after you finish your plan, which is again, a way of running scenarios, you can go and look at our partners. We are always adding more partners. Right now, we have financing partners only in the US. So these partners can help you raise money or they will invest in you or help you access grants. But we have equipment partners that are global. So our equipment partners, you can send them your plan. So, oh, here's a greenhouse. I'm building a greenhouse. I'm going to talk to them about my project. My project is definitely above 50,000, so I can write to them. And I like the energy efficiency piece. Maybe that'll help me bring down my operating costs. So I can contact them and mention agritecture and I will get preferred treatment in some way, maybe a discount, maybe I will get a faster quote, but they'll be happy to see your plan from agriculture designer. And this is a one way we're digitizing this. So we have racking companies for vertical farming, container companies for vertical farming, vertical farming warehouse companies, container and warehouse companies, another greenhouse company, you get the idea. And we're constantly building this list for our partners. So back to my dashboard. Again, I can go, I've completed my vision. Let's say I've taken my classes. I've done my branding, my crop research. You get the idea. And that is what Agritecture Designer is all about. It's about using digital technology and data to help us adapt to climate change by growing more food in smarter ways so we are building all of these tools to help people have less challenges, the challenges that I faced as a young person getting to the sector to be successful in this. You can check out our website for our FAQs, which will answer a lot of questions about the software and about the technology and about urban agriculture. We also have tutorials as well that you can learn just like I showed you today. And the pricing works like this. You can do the free one for the vision report you can pay $99 for 30 days of access to our classes. You can do the starter bundle, which is the most popular, which gives you all of the features. And that's $4.99, you get 90 days of access. Or you can sign up for our advisory bundle, which we get six classes combined with using the software. So you get to use the software and we coach you and guide you through this. And this is a very affordable way to sort of do consulting with software that's much cheaper than the typical consulting route.
So I really want to thank all of you for your attention today. It's a great pleasure to talk to you about Agritecture Designer and to be a part of this event. My name is Henry Gordon Smith. You can find me online on LinkedIn. You can find me at henry at agritecture.com. You can contact us through our website if you're interested in our services or just give the software a try. Thank you so much. Hasta luego.